Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today we're going to take a look at the best tactical karambit knives that you can buy right now in 2020 across a range of price points for everyone out there. Let's check them out. Originally designed as a farming tool, today the uses of a karambit are primarily in the tactical or martial arts environments. Now they can still be useful for utility in a forward grip. Like any hawkbill blade, it works well, especially on things like cutting rope, bandages, or clothing, or basically anything where you don't want your blade to slip away from what you're cutting. That said, they're going to be best suited for reverse grips during their intended use, with the index finger anchored through the ring at the back of the handle. This is going to help you to keep a solid grip on the knife, and it makes it harder for you to lose control of the knife in a sticky situation. First, we've got a couple of budget options before we get into some more premium stuff. And if you're wanting to give the Karambit style a try, the Boker Magnum Dark Claw is a really good option at just a hair over 30 bucks at this point in time. The blade itself is very broad and it can be opened either with the thumb cut out or the flipper tab on the back of the blade and both of them work extremely well. This knife has a two position pocket clip on one side for tip up or tip down carry. Although you are going to have to reorient your hold on the knife if you want to deploy it in a reverse grip. And as far as size, I have just enough space with my slightly larger hands to fit all my fingers in there. But if you anticipate wearing gloves while you're using the knife, you might want to look elsewhere. The steel on this knife is 440A stainless. So while it's not going to have a crazy high amount of edge retention, it makes up for that by having a super solid, very rugged build. You get a full metal backspacer that continues through the finger ring, flanked on both sides by full steel liners, and you also get G10 along for the ride. Overall, this is a tool that is definitely built to last. Another affordable karambit is the Enforcer from the Browse Blades import line, available starting at about 45 bucks from the Knife Center. The blade materials get an upgrade here to D2 in your choice of different finishes. I've got the stonewashed one here, although satin, black, and black stonewashed are also available. This is going to give you a good amount of edge retention, and you can see that when it's opened, the blade points at almost a right angle to the handle, which is a bit more than most karambits out there. It has a flat grind along with a broad swedge along the entirety of the spine. It gives the steel an octagonal cross section, which is going to remove drag along the spine and help it move through cuts more fluidly. Rather than G10, the Enforcer uses synthetic handles with inset liners. Now, it still feels very solid, but it manages to be about two ounces lighter than the Boker, so it's a bit more pocket friendly. It has about the same length of usable handle and a nice broad finger hole that you can see here. Got a lot of surface area on the inside that makes it very comfortable when you're using it. Now, the pocket clip on this browse is reversible for left or right carry with the blade pointed tip up. And like the Boker, this is also a flipper with a top mounted flipper tab, which fires the blade out on Browse's proprietary bearing systems for quick deployment. And we've actually got another opening method here as well, but I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But suffice it to say that in the budget arena, this is the Karambit that would get my personal pick. Now, given their tactical nature, Karambits benefit from some kind of quick draw capability. Now, fixed blade Karambits, of course, have this area covered but folders can make up for it in a few certain ways, and Emerson Knives has been hugely influential in that regard with their Wave Opener. This allows you to keep the blade closed up, clipped in your pocket, and then the protruding hook at the spine is going to grab your hem as you draw the knife and open the blade in one smooth motion. You can see it in action right here on Emerson's Combat Karambit, a compact and strong design. Comes in right about 275 bucks right now. But you can also see that in action on the Browse from before, with these three hooks here right on the spine. It's not an official Emerson wave, but it does the job very similarly. Now the clip on the Emerson can go on either side so that you can set it up to wave open in a forward grip or in a reverse grip right away. And it lets you get into that ready position more quickly since you don't have to readjust your hold on the knife. We've got G10 handle scales with titanium liners and lock a finger hole that's integrated into the scales, and if that finger hole wasn't enough, it has a lot of texture on that G10. Combine that with prominent finger grooves and your grip is going to be very secure. Now the 154CM stainless steel blade features a chopped off point. This grants more tip strength since you don't have that needle point, but there still is a sharp enough point to penetrate very well. In typical Emerson fashion, this blade is chisel ground with a secondary edge right at the bottom. Some say this is stronger and some say it's easier to maintain as well, which can be helpful with the recurve edge on that hawkbill shape, which is already not as easy to sharpen as a conventional blade shape. 
Now in addition to that wave shaped opener, you can also open this knife with the thumb cut out or with the flipper and both open the blade very smoothly thanks to a GTC bearing based pivot. And as we look at these next knives, I think you're going to clearly see the influence of the Emerson. The first is the Fox 478 and 479 series. The difference between the two being aluminum handles on the 478 and G10 on the 479. This 478 features a flipper, a blade cutout, and an officially licensed Emerson Wave. You can even see their patent number here on the back of the blade. That's because when a design works, it just plain works, and if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. And the Fox is definitely one of the more premium feeling karambits on the market today, which is impressive considering this one is just a few dollars more than 125 the steel is N690 and has a pointier tip than the Emerson and a long swedge like the Browse we saw earlier. It also has a reversible pocket clip and a liner lock for similar usability. Now the handles on this Italian made knife are the roomiest we've looked at yet. We're getting into glove wearing territory with this knife, although the ring might be on the smaller side depending on the size of your fingers. But this knife even feels good in a forward grip without using the ring, thanks to the size and the mostly straight profile of the handle. It's also thanks to the edges on the ring itself. Both the inside and outside of the circle have been completely crowned for comfort. If you like your Karambit to come with a touch of class, the 478 is definitely a good option, although we'll have another one coming up shortly as well. First though, we'll look at the Spyderco Karahawk, another Karambit with a licensed Emerson Wave opener. If small size, ease of carry, and discretion are your priorities, the Karahawk is the one to get. By combining a lockback with thin liners and textured G10 that's nearly as thin, they've made one of the flattest carrying karambits out there without giving up on strength. That's thanks to that lockback, which even comes with the David Boy dent cutout to help prevent accidental disengagement. Now with that dent and the Emerson connection, we see one of the things that I really appreciate about Spyderco. They always cite their sources and give credit where credit is due. The blade steel is VG10, and just like the whole knife itself, which is a little on the smaller side, the blade is kept slightly smaller as well. It's just about two and a quarter inches long, all the better for compact carry. The blade itself has a titanium carbonitride or tie nye coating, and in fact the liners are also tie nye coated, and the back spring is black as well. And that's going to help keep reflections down for those who need that. The Karahawk is definitely a duty ready knife, priced right now at about 240 bucks. Now on to another fancier model, the Wii Knife Company 816 Incisor, an offshoot of their 708 series Karambits. Now with the Incisor, you get everything that makes a Wii Knife great. You get excellent build quality with milled titanium handles, a machined pocket clip which is reversible, S35VN steel, a ball bearing pivot, and a nice flipper tab. Now despite the premium materials, this knife actually doesn't cost much more than the Spyderco we just saw. It's just over 250 bucks at this point in time. This knife does not have the Emerson Wave, but it does have something that achieves the same result. You get this small metal tab that's screwed into place on the spine of the blade, and in addition to the hem of the pocket trick, it also works as a thumb stud if you want to open the blade that way. The handles feel good, and this knife actually comes with a frame lock, the only one on our list today that does, and it has the now commonplace but still appreciated lock bar insert. It enables consistent lockup over time, and it even has a small tab on the inside that prevents the lock bar from being pushed out too far when you're unlocking the knife. Now the incisor is nearly double the price from the Fox that we looked at earlier, but if you want the utmost premium experience possible from your Karambit, this knife is definitely the way to go. Now for another bruiser, the Cold Steel Tiger Claw, which is easily the biggest we've looked at yet. With most of the rest of our knives, all the blades have been between two and a half and three inches or so in length, the Tiger Claw stretches nearly to three and a half inches. You can get it with a plain edge or fully serrated, and it uses premium CTS XHP steel for a long lasting edge. And it does it all for a price of just under 120 bucks right now. The handle's bigger too, and for gloved hands, this is definitely the largest option here. There's even plenty of room for a full grip without gloves, without having to use the finger ring at all. The handles are slim G10 with a decent amount of texture, although not quite as thin as the Spyderco from earlier. And this knife gets around the quick draw problem with an ambidextrous thumb plate designed by Andrew Demko. This allows wave-like pocket opening as well as conventional opening with your thumb. Another Demko innovation is on board with this knife with the triad lock. Now it looks like a lock back, but it's even stronger thanks to some improvements they've made under the hood, so to speak. With the build quality on this knife, 
The blade steel you get, the size, and the price, the Tiger Claw is definitely worth a look if you need a hard-working karambit. Finally, and probably the most innovative karambit on this table, the CRKT Provoke, which completely reimagines what a folding karambit can be. Rather than the blade spinning around a pivot point, it actually rotates open on two arms so that it's pointing the same direction the whole time that it's opening. Now this may seem like a gimmick at first, but it is much more than that. They call this action kinematic and it actually serves a purpose. First, even if the lock were to fail, the blade has no chance of closing on your fingers. Second, it also enables fast blade deployment. I'll unlock it here real quick to show you that. Now this is not gonna be nearly as easy to close one-handed as these liner or frame locking knives, but I think that's outweighed by some of the other advantages with this design. It's because when you draw this knife from your pocket or the available belt sheath, your finger is already in the ring. Then you push firmly on the subtle jimping on the back of the arm here, and the blade shoots forward with an affirmative click and you're ready to go. Now this method is a hair behind the wave in terms of outright speed, but it's even more intuitive to use when you're under stress, and those kinematic arms solve a couple of problems that no one was even thinking about as a problem before this knife came out. The steel is D2, which isn't as premium as some of these other options, but the engineering is a bit more complex to be fair. It has a chisel grind, and it starts with pretty robust blade stock, a bit over 3 16 of an inch thick, just over 0.2 inches in fact. It also has a finger ring with a wide surface area, which I appreciated on that browse, and a flush fit pocket clip that springs out of the way when you're holding the knife. Now the prices range from 200 up to 225 for this first responder version right now, and in my opinion, the first responder is the one to get because it adds a ceramic glass breaker here at the end, that's a nice bit of added functionality that doesn't get in the way at all. And it also includes the bolter on belt sheath, all for less than the price of buying the base model and then getting the sheath separately. So that's it for our list of best folding karambits that you can get in 2020 with something for every budget and every level of user. Now the only question is, which would you pick to carry? Be sure to let us know your favorite in the comments and to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to head over to knifecenter.com. And be sure to sign up for our Knife Rewards program too while you're there, because nothing beats getting a new knife except maybe free money to spend on your next one. And if you want to see more content like this, as well as roundups of all the new knives that hit our shelves each and every week, make sure you're subscribed with the button below. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. It's 90 with a pointier tip than the Emerson and a log, log swedge. Log swedge? <laughs> Lived in a log swedge cabin. We can't use that. <laughs> or can we? Oh, no, no. Also get G10. Ooh.